And then, and then it's like, you, you, you wake up in the jail, you're like, I did. It take two, two, probably four or five, shoot a gun. Pop, 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 pop. What's that? That wasn't even five seconds. Your life could be gone for less than five seconds. And the history of my criminal participation and the crimes that I committed and got locked up for, it probably didn't, it probably didn't add up to about four or five minutes. But I spent five years in the juvenile facility and then now 20 years in the penitentiary. I spent majority of my life inside of cells. They always feed me. Then my homeboy, rest in peace to him, Nitty, he came to my cell one day. He said, bro, man, we got to, this to join, set up an Instagram page. That's how I set up the Instagram page. And that's how my name became Wilder267. If you look, that's my prison ID right there. See my number? DG2670. I got the 267 for my prison name. So I took the 267 so I could remember where I came from and where I ain't never going back to. Hey, man, welcome back to the 85 South Show. Let's do it, baby. Let's go. We got a very special guest in the house with the us family. today. We got to change the name of the show now. It's going to be $85 million worth of game. Yeah. 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 Oh, if you can think like of him, that. the baby oil edition. Hey, well, why you well, gotta, well, stop well, playing with me? Well, listen, man, that's, up that's all his jokes. You know, he 25 years in the chain game. Man, he just said he was going through a bottle of baby oil a week. Now, I see there's a possibility you can. That's, that I never create confirmed, a rash. I never confirmed that I was going to do that. But even if you don't confirm that you did it, you was in the vicinity of somebody else. No, and you were but baby oil somebody. in a fast, fast motion is, is not good. No, lotion is better. See, see, this was this Mixed. shit. This shit going somewhere. This I don't even want to go. Yeah, man. Hey, we got none other than oh. slippery ass wallow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> slippery ass wallow three six seven in here with us today, talking about his new book. Yes, armed right. with good intentions. It's amazing that he wrote a book. He just learned how to read last year. Yup. <laughs> no, I'm just fucking with the you, computer man. Help me. Hey, what made you do it, wallow? I wanted to share my story so they could see the similarities in my journey. And how I didn't, didn't give up, and how they, you know, they can't give up. You gotta keep going. Because a lot of times, if people are looking at everybody here, they look at the success, they look at everything you're doing, they look at the jury, the cars, but they don't know. It's your, you know, you gotta pay attention to your story, not your glory. Right, right. All of us here, we had some hardships, some trauma growing up, trying to figure it out, not knowing what was gonna happen. Could have went to, you know, could have been dead, could have went another route. And I think a lot of times, some people see, once you get to success, success is there. It's like, oh, he got it figured out. No, we don't. We still figuring this shit out. And the process of why we winning. You still trying to figure things out. You go through the hardships, the ups and downs. And it's like, I wanted people to see that. Be like, yo, we the same. I just didn't give up. Oh, definitely. So I'm, I'm, I'm 32, right? Mm -hmm. So take us back. Take us back to, because everybody claimed that they been in the streets and all that. But it's only two ways. You can either escape or you get the ass end of the stick. Mm -hmm. And I think we all witnessed that. And of course, to your testament, you got the ass end of the stick. Yeah. But like you said, you got out and you overcame. You are a product of rehabilitation, for real. Mm -hmm. So can you take us back to when Wallow was in the streets and then when Wallow realized, oh shit, my life just got taken away from me. And now, during this process, how do I keep a sane mind and knowing that all right, my day is going to come? But when my day came, when my day actually came, I didn't take it for granted. You know what it was like? Me being in the streets, I was uh, I was just emulating the shit that I seen take place in the ghetto, and I wanted to be a part of something. I didn't want to be left out, and I didn't want to feel. I, I, I wasn't strong enough to embrace my individualism mm -hmm. because you know, I, you know what I find funny to me, what I laugh at a lot of times, with motherfuckers being in the street telling me I ain't no follower. Nigga, you ain't invented the street game. Niggas been doing that shit since the beginning of the time. Um, and it's this idea that we have in our mind that if we, ain't, if we ain't a part of this criminal lifestyle, we a sucker, we a lame, we a goofy, we a weirdo. And that's what was taking place when I was growing up. And I was like, I ain't want to be that. So uh, the fact I wasn't strong enough and I was impressionable not to go against the grain and say, you know what, let me just go to school. Mm -hmm. Let me go, you know, try to play some sports. Let me just do some regular shit. I said, man, I got to be a part of this. And at the same time, in the ghetto, only thing I seen, the only people that got respected in our ghettos, all I get was a motherfucker that got some money. Right. They ain't respect the working man. They respect Mike with the Benz that pull up getting the most beautifulest girl in the neighborhood. He had the Benz, he had the gold chain on, pocket full of money. Miss Johnson, Miss Brown, Miss Green, all the older ladies, hey baby, 
They wasn't speaking to Mr. Earl that was coming back from work that was a plumber eight day dirty. Right. So I said, and a lot of us said, I gotta be him, the street nigga, the drug dealer. And and that what it was, but like, I ain't gonna hold you, DC. When I thought about it later on in jail, I said, man, I'm sitting in jail all goofy for following, trying to be down with some shit that I really wasn't down with, but was afraid to say, that ain't me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And nobody wanna say that. That's why a lot of times, <laughs> when I see everybody with this ultra tough shit, I just be like, come on, dog. Like, you, you, you just really scared. You just don't want to tell the homies that you think they're going to look at you goofy. But you really don't, because cause your tough shit is like manufactured. I can just see through it. Because mm -hmm. it's not consistently, and you really got a heart. You really not as, <clears throat> you really not as cold as you think you is. That's why you're doing, that's why you're putting all the camouflage on. You got the mask on, because you're scared to see yourself. Mm -hmm. You don't want nobody to see your face and be like, come here, man, give me, let me give you a hug. Man, you ain't really trying to do nothing. What oh. was it? What was the thrill of the streets for you? The thrill was the excitement that in America, they love the successful criminal. So I wanted to be one. If you go to a judge, a lawyer, a district attorney, the FBI agent, they're going to tell you their favorite movie is Scarface or Michael Culeone and the guy. That, that's all they love. That's all they love. We, we only love wrong. And that was always on the pedestal in America. Everything about it was... That's the only person that got the. So I was excited, like, damn, can I steal the American dream? Because I never seen nobody getting the American dream working. I never seen nobody obtaining that shit. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Everybody I seen that was getting these motherfuckers get, damn. Getting that drugs, he got the car. Why, well, Mr. John ain't never had no brand new Benz, man? He been working for 100 years. He ain't never getting nothing brand new. Mm. All he do is paint his house every two years. This motherfucker flying, doing his, got all the girls, he got the drink. So you look at that, especially young, you want to be, you want that shit. You want to be down. You don't know no better. And, I, and even though you got a good family, grandma, my mom, they telling me what to do, but they uh, the, the, the right path, they out fucking number. They out number when you step outside of the house and step into the streets. You got all these different personalities, all these different, you know, people that's on the same, you know, impressionable just like you. You don't know. They just know how to camouflage that shit better than you. Mm -hmm. They putting a the real nigga costume. That real nigga costume is crazy. They sell them Jones at the corner store. <laughs> Think about it. It's just not, you know, they just know how to put it on. They know what to say. They got the, the bald up face, the energy, and you just like, oh, damn, I got to be down with that. It's deep. So when, when, when was the moment that you realized, oh, shit, I'm caught? It wasn't just about being caught. When you go to jail, you're like, damn. I'm like, oh, shit, my ass on the line. They're they going to try to get me. Right. On some real shit. I ain't, I ain't one of them dudes that wanted to cap and just be like, I'm in that joint. Like, oh, shit. I'm thinking about the movie, Blood and Blood. Oh, my God. What the fuck did I done do? You know? Because I was already doing the juvie, juvenile bits, but that shit wasn't really nothing. But when you, you know, they certified me as an adult, 17. Uh, fix who's my? Wallow? Motherfucking Come on, Mike. Now, shit getting deep now. Goddamn. He hit the juvie joints. This is first day. Remember that, Juvie joint. <laughs> this is last day, fuck Yeah, you fucking up. Nigga coming in here with his hand in his pocket. Get your hand out your pocket, nigga. They gonna fix a nigga Mike with your hand in your pocket. <laughs> you got it, though. You got it, Sam. You gonna go through his... How we fix sound? that. <laughs> <laughs> Let it marinate. <laughs> what we looking yeah. like? We good? Give him one second. Oh, shit. <laughs> Yes, sir. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, okay bit. Juvie. So, you know, juvenile system, I'm, I'm going through that, but I'm a juvenile when they certify me as a dope. Because in Pennsylvania, you know, all these states is so different. You're a child being charged as an adult. Yeah, because when you get locked up with a certain crime, I had the guns, or uh, the, the firearm violations, and the robbery. So it's like, oh, when, at the district, when they take it, oh, you're a, you're a dope now. Mm -hmm. You got to go to court to figure out if we want to make you a child again. Because mm -hmm. your record mixed with your crime, no. Nah, we gonna send you up top, and then you go to court, and you in there trying to get the mercy of the judge. Judge like, nah, your jacket too a little lengthy. You you know what the fuck? You know the right. You got to go up top to the big boy. So you still really a kid now. They gonna they gonna sentence you like you a dope. and that's when the shit get real. And something that you say all the time, what I saw you say about your messaging to, you know, throughout your time being in jail, watching the revolving door, the youngest coming in and out, keep yeah. coming in and out, was y'all operating out of the, out of a book that don't nobody read no more. Yeah, that's what the old, that's what the youngest would tell you because, it, you know, it took it took a long time, you know, because I remember I, I seen this young kid, he was telling on his homies, and we was in the holding cells, and. It was some real information that he gave me and it woke me up to the point of like, damn, that's some deep shit. And I'm like, damn, nephew, you know, you did your own shit, whatever you did. And 
Damn, how you gonna tell on them? You was a part of. He's like, OG, oh, mind your business, man. <laughs> Damn. I said, damn, because we in the we in the gates. Like his his cell down there by with the green joint and we in the gates. And he walked by and they're like, yeah, they nigga tell him what's on here. And I'm like, so I'm like, I'm like, what you say, young blood? What you say? So my man Jeff Gant, oh, oh, OG Jeff Gant get on the joint. He's like, oh, gangster in the joint. This is boxer ball, all that. You know what I mean? He was really respected. He said, what you say, Neff? What you say? He said, y'all heard me, man. Mind y'all business, man. See, see, the problem with y'all OGs is, you, you know. Y'all operating off of some rules in the book that nobody read no more, man. Mind your fucking business, man. So I sat back down on the bed because his vocal tone was a little aggressive, and I didn't know if he really was like that. Mm. So I didn't want to figure out if he really was built like that. I just sat down, laid down, let Jeff keep talking to him through the gate. I'm like, because I'm sitting here processing like, damn, that was some deep shit. All them rules that everybody died for and swore by and this, that, and the third, that shit out the window. The United States of America, street code manual, whatever it was, it's like, and then you say to yourself, was it ever really a manual or was we just blind following? Because what the fuck happened? Where did we get out of all this shit? Right. And you look at it and you're seeing like, you know, for me being in the penitentiary, I'm seeing dudes in there for, you know, you got dudes sitting in that joint, especially in the state of Pennsylvania, been in here, you know, 45 years, 30 years. 30 years is like a normal number. Damn. Like, that's like normal. <clears throat> um, you know, Everybody been like them dudes doing life. They've been in there yeah, thirty years. Like that's like the normal joint, man. So it's like you just like who the fuck won out of this shit. And on the other side, the ones that ain't in penitentiary, they did. Right. So it's like who really won? You be like, damn, who really won out of this shit, bro? The mortuary. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So it's like, and then and then it's like you you, you wake up in the jail. You was like, I did. It take two. Two, probably four or five, shoot a gun. Pop, 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 pop. What's that? That wasn't even five seconds. Your life could be gone for less than five seconds. So when you look at that shit, and when I think about all the robberies, all my crime, I probably, in the history of my criminal participation and the crimes that I committed and got locked up for, it probably didn't, it probably didn't add up to about four or five minutes. But I spent five years in the juvenile facility and then now 20 years in the penitentiary. I spent majority of my life inside of cells to where though I was so normal. It was so normal for me to be bitten. It was like nothing. I get locked up. It's like, oh, I'm just gonna do a bit. Fuck you, I ain't saying that. You know what I mean? Go in there. It was a, it was a program where I go in there, I get to the cell block. I see, oh, let me get some cleaning equipment. I splash the cell down, clean the cell, scrub it out, all that shit. I mean, get with the block worker. Yo, man, man, I'm gonna need some extra sheets, man. I'm gonna need some extra sheets. Give me an extra pillowcase, blanket. I got you. I'm gonna get you some commissary. And I just go back into my bed. You know what I mean? Because it's a program. And you see, you see so many brothers do it. That's why a lot of our family, me, like, damn, that motherfucker do a bit like it ain't five years. Motherfucker, five years, that ain't nothing. Hey, man, how you do that much time and not let it break your mind, though, Wallow? Because, like, we've been knowing you for a long time. You know what I'm saying? Nigga don't get that And I ain't never like seen you get out of character. I ain't never seen you not smiling. I ain't never seen you speak with an aggressive tone. But, like... The people who know your story know that, nigga, that's a world away from, from the rowdy nigga you were. Like, how do you deal with that part and not let it break your mind? Prison humbled me because no matter what you're doing and you think you do, how tough you is, I done seen some real, live, tough motherfuckers. Like, I'm talking about, I done seen some real, live, angry motherfuckers. And it'd be like, you in that cell and you in them joints, and you like, oh, my life ain't that bad. These motherfuckers are gonna be lifting weights to life stop. Like you got, like you gotta understand, I'm a, I'm in the penitentiary, the biggest penitentiary in Pennsylvania, five thousand inmates in this joint, and majority of these dudes got, they got to be here to their life stop. So it's like, I'm looking at it like, I always had this relief in me, like damn, I'm getting out one day, but it also give you a level of respect, it give you, it give you some humility. Cause you got to be humble in these type of environments. Cause prison was the most dangerous and the most respectable environment I've ever been in my life. Because these dudes in here is real life killers, and you got motherfuckers they just they wake up every day hoping they they can stab somebody today. I didn't mind motherfuckers. They be just angry and bitter. So, but then it's also the dudes that's on a high level of the mannerism was crazy because like they so serious 
and ain't playing no game to where it's dope, you'll see an OG bump or another OG in the process of going to the chow hall, and they'll sit there for a minute and have a, a apology. Hey, man, this is Carlos Mills from the 85 South Show. If you on Prize Picks, make sure you use code 85 South so you can get that $50, man. Once you pick that $5, line up. Prize Picks will give you $50. That's if you use the code. You feel me? So I go just see. got it. All right, see? No cap. Just got 85 it. South Show. Prize picks. We on there right now. Yeah. Got me a good little $5 pick, too. Come on. Yeah. I put it together right here, man. I went to, you know, I dubbed something in the MLB, WNBA. Look, it's Came easy. back. And look, all you got to do is pick the over, under, more That's or it. less, yards receiving, all of that. What you think, Zeke? Multiple sports, hockey. WNBA, NBA, college football, NFL football. You can bet on whatever. It's not even necessarily a bet. It's picks. You picking. The You're, not the You're, picking. You're not betting. You're picking. You're not betting. You're picking. You're not betting. You're picking. You said do it all day anyway. Fantasy football made easy. Even for people who don't even know how to play it, it's, it's simple. Point and click. You pick your over, your under, more or less. What you think may or may not happen within the game, and then that's how you win. You, that's all the game that I can get. And depending on how you do it, it increases the odds. Absolutely. absolutely. The, Make sure you go to Prize Picks and use promo code 85. Ooh, the longer the shot, the bigger the win. I like how you put that. Say, how many turnovers Beck had? Three hey, interceptions. Hey, buddy, Three picks. Whoa. Hey, we talking. <laughs> hey, man. Nigga, this ain't that kind of sports hey, show. Hey, all hey, that Skip hey, Bailey hey, shit, hey, man. Hey, so, if you look at his uh, QB, you don't give a fuck about that. Hey, man, what the fuck going on in here, bro? Hey, man, this nigga over here bro, talking about some. The nigga stop it, bro. And let's talk, and let's talk about the first down he had in the first quarter. Um, Hey, Marcel. No, 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 no. If you look at his passer rated, nigga, we don't hey, man. want that shit. Man, fuck this, man. <laughs> I don't need that. What that nigga Tyree said. I don't need this <laughs> shit. <laughs> Bro, I'm talking about everybody chiming in. We vibing. That nigga interrupted us. Marcel, how many times? Nigga. Y'all don't text each hey, other, man. man. <laughs> Hold on, bro. Bad, what are we talking about? Bro, that shit just, man. Let's go to a next subject. <laughs>
You know what I'm saying? That's heavy. So I'm looking at this shit like, damn, you know, and then I, I'm looking at it like, damn, you know, I can't be in here complaining. I can't be bitching. Like, you know, and then I'm seeing dudes kill themselves. They hanging up in there. Dudes getting raped. Uh, motherfuckers getting stabbed to the motherfucker arm get tired. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, I didn't, you know, I had to go so deep in the prison where it's, I had to go insane in order to stay sane. So me and you kicking it, we walking in the yard, man, you see, you see LeBron last night, you see the fight? Man, that shit was crazy. You may hear motherfucker screaming over there, ah, ah, motherfucker chasing a motherfucker with a knife, stabbing him. But me and you, our minds is protected because we already went insane to stay sane. So we looking at that motherfucker like, man, that motherfucker did some dumb shit. But yeah, man, the game was crazy. And we walking. The, the, the dehumanization of black people by black people, it already took place in the ghetto, whereas though we taught from a kid, when you fall off the swing and you start crying, boy, stop crying, be tough. You taught not to feel and not to be human from a kid perspective. So now we in the penitentiary, it's really real. You definitely can't be no human. You definitely can't show no signs of emotion. You see what I'm saying? You're going to do that when you go in your cell, put your towel up. That's when you, when you by yourself, you figure that shit out. <laughs> With that being said, you, you know, you lost your brother. Yeah. While you was in NJ, your mom's. No, my mom. Mom's, your my mom. Grand, my grandma. Your grandma. That's my mom, my step pop. So you got to understand. How did you manage that, though? What you, what you just said about not being able to show no emotion, to lose people who are close to you like that in that environment. It get that, deep. It get deep with me because, like, my, 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 my prison joint, I was a part of it. I was a part of generational incarceration. This is something that takes place that a lot of us don't understand. Generational incarceration is, in the 80s, I used to go see my step-pop in prison, right? Me and my brother, Steve and Jalal. Jalal is my step-pop uh, son, my youngest brother. So we used to always go up there, and Hip, hip, hip used to always give me, give me, yo, man, stay out, don't do this, man, go to school. He used to always push that on me, but you in the penitentiary. So, I, so I'm going to the penitentiary to see him, it didn't work. The game he was giving me didn't work. So we we in Dallas Penitentiary. We're going to see him, and it's in Dallas, Pennsylvania. So what happened is, this in the 80s, 1990, by the time, this in the 80s, so I'm growing up doing my stuff. He in prison, we always want to see him. By 1998, me and him and cellmates in that prison, I used to visit him as a kid. In 2005, me and my brother and cellmates in the prison, we used to visit my step-pop as a kid. They wind up going home. I'm doing big numbers. Both of them expire while I'm in the joint. So it's like, it's, 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 it's real deep. But on the flip side of this is this. In prison, I learned about nepotism. Because while you're looking at us on this side of the, on this side as inmates and as a family structure and their brothers, cousins and all that shit, on the other side, the warden, his brother is a lieutenant, his son is a sergeant. His sister is running the nurse building. His other brother run the gym activities at the prison. His other cousin run the prison kitchen. So you got 15 motherfucking family members on the other side that working here. And then you got a bunch of other families that's over here. You got you got mom, you got sons and dads. She and Sales is both doing life in the penitentiary. So it's, it's a crazy thing when you look at it. So when I see what be going on, I'm not speaking to these cats from a place of, some old head is disconnected from the reality of life. Just don't do that. Don't. I'm not talking to don't do that shit. I'm telling you, because listen, Slim, and I, and I said it, that little money you got, don't disrespect your blessing. Whether it was Pooh, whether it was Thug, whoever it was, I'm giving it to him. If you look at it, I'm not talking to them niggas as they peer. I'm talking to them niggas as an elder. Like, listen, Neff, I'm telling you, I don't give a fuck what you talking about. Because when the people come, and like you said, we seeing this with Diddy, when they come and they want you, that money don't mean nothing, man. Money don't mean shit sometimes when they want you. So I'm speaking from a place of, of it's established. Like, and like I tell people, I don't speak no theory shit. Like I wanted, I'm not no speaker out here that's talking about, oh, you could do, so I'm not speaking from theory. I'm only speaking from manifestation and experience. If I tell you something about the, 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 you know, the dark side of the street culture, the penitentiary, I'm telling you based off experience. You know, some people gonna tell you, it ain't jail, ain't cool, don't go to, nigga, you ever been to jail? Some people gonna tell you, yeah, you can do it. You can materialize your dreams. They're gonna be on Instagram with all this motivational shit. Nigga, what you do? Where your money at? What you do? 
what you come about him? Wait, what, what did we see from you for you to tell me that I could be to try to motivate me? Nigga, you can't motivate me. You ain't get no money. See, one thing about this shit out here, you can't teach what you don't know and you can't leave when you don't go. These niggas ain't going nowhere. They just talking that shit. So they don't have they don't have the expertise, the knowledge to be able to speak on certain shit. All that magical shit. Now, motiv- nah, that shit sound good and it look good because you think you're going to get some clickbait and you're going to win. But what did you mo- did you motivate yourself first, nigga? I came out of the penitentiary and, and took it to the took it to the top. So that's that. But y'all build y'all build the y'all build the you know y'all y'all ain't no different. No, y'all is different. Y'all a little different than you know what the Wayne's brothers built with living color because y'all own y'all shit. It's a little different, and ain't no disrespect to them. They was OGs that laid the foundation, but it's a difference. You see what I'm saying? So y'all can speak on the behalf of how to build you know, a, a, a company, a platform, multiple platforms, you know what I mean? So it's like, I think we live in this world where it's though people and the young cats, they not trying to hear something from somebody that ain't doing it or ain't got shit. There's yeah. a big difference. I agree, but you was gone for a dub. Like, yeah. that's, you know what I mean, that's unreal when you think about that and, you know what I mean, that's like a nigga went to jail in t- 2004, came home today. Yeah. What was your connection to being able to come straight out like you did and jump right into the culture that was going on in the time that you got out? Like, did you have a consiglier on the outside that was like, hey, this social media, where no, it's at? This is where, where it is. I was interrogated in prison. Let me give you the game. So I got so much time in prison that, you know, my cell, I told the one CO that was working the block because I'm in greatest four penitentiary and that's right close to Philly. So it's a lot of black guards in there. Now, if you move from there, you and them joints with them hillbilly guards, it ain't no fucking joke. So I got the guard to make my cell a transit cell. So when my cell became a transit cell, that mean they moving people out of there, might be there for a week, two weeks, but they coming straight from the streets, parole violators and stuff like that. So by that, I'm in there, I'm able to interrogate them and get sidewalk therapy through them. Cause they come in, I'm like, damn, yeah. Yeah, man, I went to Miami. Yeah, well, let me see the picture. Yeah. My girl gonna send them this week. Damn. Well, how did you go to Miami? Because you're talking to a nigga that never went nowhere. I'm like, no, I had to, you know, I'll be booking a flight to my debit before I go in this joint called Expedia. I'm like, Expedia, what, what's that? It's online. What the fuck is online? So I'm writing shit in my book of life. Book of life is nothing but a composition book where I would write everything that I was told. Yeah, you do that? Yeah. So they always feed me. Then my homeboy, rest in peace to him, Nitty, he came to my cell one day. He had a wireless hotspot, a clear wireless hotspot like this thin. And an iPod touch. He said, bro, man, we got to, this to join, set up an Instagram page. That's how I set up the Instagram page. And that's how my name became Wildo267. See, my prison number, a lot of people think, damn, 267, that's Philly. No, that's obsolete. It wasn't 267 when I went to the penitentiary. It was 215. So motherfuckers be like, damn, man, well, you know, when they get the names. And I'm going to show you why. If you look, that's my prison ID right there. See my number? DG2670. I got the 267 for my prison name when I was setting up my Instagram because when I go set my Instagram up, it was somebody that had the name. So I'm like, I got to... So I took the 267 so I could remember where I came from and where I ain't never going back to. That's my prison number. A lot of people didn't know that. They think, oh, you just got it from... Phil-. No. So I set that shit up and I'm sitting in the cell now on Graham. I'm looking at this shit, but this is like 2000... When I get the phone, 2012, 2013, some shit like that. I get the phone, I mean, get that shit. It was like, I'm studying the game now, for real. I'm in the inside watching a whole shit. I'm like, damn, it's sweet out there. Because I'm looking at the, I'm, I'm in prison, looking at the world outside, especially our community. And I'm like, I'm telling my homie, I said, is it me? Or is it more motherfuckers in prison out there than they here? Because these motherfuckers, they put limitations on themselves on anything. Motherfuckers ain't doing too much out there. I could relapse around these motherfuckers because we ain't grow up with the satellite. I'm like, these motherfuckers got the satellite? And they ain't doing nothing with that shit? I'm like, I could do anything. It was up. I'm in there watching Anthony Bourdain. Anthony Bourdain used to be on drugs. This nigga got his life together. Now he giving people education about the world and exposure. I knew that in the ghetto, we lacked exposure. Niggas ain't going nowhere. A nigga ain't going to leave their city. You know what I mean? Motherfuckers never left Macon, Georgia, man. They ain't going nowhere. Coming to Atlanta is like, oh, man, we... It's so easy to get a flight. I didn't know a flight was that cheap. I ain't, so I'm looking online in the phone. I'm looking, I'm writing down, oh damn, you could fly from, from Philly to LA? 
for a hundred something dollars? What the fuck? I ain't know the difference between airlines and cheap airlines. I'm like, yo. So I'm talking to niggas in the yard like niggas don't even. Hey man, niggas don't be going nowhere. What was you doing out there? Man, I was chilling. You was hey, what's up, everybody? Hey. We are the 85 South Show. Hey. And we will be, be coming to Birmingham, Alabama. Oh, Birmingham. Going to Birmingham. October the 13th. Yes, Birmingham, man. Alabama. We will be down there. October 13th? October 13th. October 13th. That's at the Legacy Center. The Legacy Arena. Mm -hmm. That's next oh, month. Because we are leaving a legacy in Birmingham. That's literally Alabama. in the month. Be ham. October 13th. Martin Luther King would love this shit. October 13th. Uh, October 13th. October 13th. Uh, 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 Alabama. Rest in peace to Tito Jacks. Yeah. More different. Hey, man. Say, man. What we doing? Hey, that ain't it. It's Maine. Maine. Hey, man. Hey, man. Say, man. Hey, man. Memphis, man. Memphis, man. Memphis, man. Memphis, I forgot the day, man. But we coming. October 12th. October 12th, man. We're going to be in South Haven. They're right back. We going to motherfucking. Everybody from Memphis can drive over there. Yeah, we know South Haven right now, so we're not going to Memphis. We're going to Mississippi. We're going to South Haven, Mississippi, but it's North Mississippi. Everybody from Memphis going to come. But all the Mississippi people coming too. South Haven with the Atlanta Center. No cap. October 12th. Yeah, I might get one of them birds, man. That's a pay week too, so you ain't got no excuse. We're gonna go ahead, man. Call one man and get one of them birds. So we're going to South Haven. Hit the website. October twelfth. But a lot of Memphis people get one of them birds, man. It's close to Memphis. Get one of them birds. Right, Memphis this way. Real man. Right there. Right there. South Haven. Then he gonna get one of them birds, man. You trying to get some birds? Um, birds. At least makes the neighborhood a little bit more safe. No cap. At least for the kids. October twelfth. If you ever want to see a woman who just fine as hell, where we gotta go? Houston. Yes, indeed. Houston. Well, in that case, October twentieth, we gonna see if he's telling the truth. Cause eight time. Where we going? It's going down. Going down. We coming down. Going down. Eight time. Go away. It's Splash City. You get, you dig. And going listen, down. listen. It's going down. Just like the light went out. Going. Ah! Yeah. I said the light went the out. What the fuck is wrong with you? We're not on really black. I said the light went out. Cause you trying to make this a film. It's going down. We're going to H-Town. It's like going down. Shit. Yeah. In the H-Town. This nigga's trying to blind niggas. I got, a, I got a call Slim Thug, Paul Wall, Lil Kiki, Lil Flip. Paul Wall, put him up. Trey the Truth. And Paul Wall, hey, We don't even have to call Trey. He just know. Yeah, yeah he, he just know. know. He just Trey know. Trey won't be like, yeah, man, we got to come down, man. Get y'all, man. Shut up, man. <laughs> <laughs> he put it up. Going down to the H-Town, man. Yeah, all ready. Eight times. No cap. October twentieth. Energy arena. Yeah. NRG. That's what we bring in the NRG. Fuck you talking about. Is that what this is? Going down. Fuck? Yeah. Energy. NRG. We bring the energy. Eight times. October twentieth. It's going down. We coming, coming down. I'm coming down. I'm in a slab. You did. Eight times. Eighty fours and both. October twentieth. Get your tickets. Chilling down the way. You know, a flight costs. I'm studying shit, looking up stuff, and I'm like, oh man, yeah, it's sweet when I get out. <laughs> and I just came home, and I'm like. I had to roll, man, because I had a, a, a starting point from the cheat code of telecommunication. And I said, when I get out, it's free. I come from the 80s where though you had to hustle every day to get yours. So I'm like, I'm out hustle these dudes. And, and I, one thing I realized about the black culture was everybody got too many twos. They were too cool. They were too tough, so they're going to be too broke. It's even one of them over. And when I say too cool, a motherfucker got all these stipulations on what they too cool to do. Man, I ain't getting no job, man. Oh, man, I ain't fucking with them. They corny. I ain't doing everything. Is you too cool for everything, nigga. And then you got the other part. I'm just tough. Them niggas pussies, man. I can't be around no pussies. I'm a tough guy for no reason. I never made no money being tough, but I love being tough. I'm just a loser, and I love it. <laughs> He's a fucking idiot. <laughs> because, you know, you got motherfucker. The dude that's too cool to work, it's like you always begging and barring and buying, trying to get something from the motherfucker that work. Because historically, it's always been the working people in our family that went and build niggas out of jail, that sent niggas commissary money. But you was too cool to do all this shit. But then you go to the penitentiary and got to work for cents on a dollar. But at the same time, you niggas be out here too cool. Everybody don't want to work. Damn, yeah. You ask them off average dude, damn, what's up, man? Where you work at? No, I don't work, man. I rap. No, you don't. You're a fucking hobbyist. You don't rap. Don't tell nobody you rap. You rap when you get money. You don't rap when you're just a hobbyist. That's a hobby, nigga. You're not getting no money for rapping. You you out here fantasy. You you got a you you dealing with fantasies and shit, man. Fuck is you talking about? I rap. I had to tell my homie son that shit. He was mad at me, man. Mad as shit at me. Still mad at me, Brian. 
I said, Neff, what the fuck? I'm telling niggas you rap, man. That's a hobby, man. It's like, I said, you see what's the name that's always going to the motherfucking, the playground with the knee, knee braces on? He doing all them extra shots and all them dumbass moves. That's a hobby, man. That nigga ain't getting no money for playing basketball. You the same as him. He was mad as shit at me, man. That's the worst thing you can yeah. tell a nigga. Now, oh, I, I, I said that. But that's I the real that. I said that. I said that on motherfucking <laughs> on, on, on the brother's shows uh, up in New York. And they was, I said, one of the most disrespectful things you can tell a motherfucker is equivalent to spitting in nigga faces that he can't rap in the ghetto. Because this what happened. This shit right here. This shit is worse than the tell our vision. Tell live vision. Mm. The lies is told. Because this shit got motherfuckers believing that they motherfucking Michael Jordan when they really the towel boy. Because it's the illusion of this. We remove, this one we removed in our community. We remove judgment. We remove reality. Um, shame. And we remove shame. So now it's like everybody is extraordinary victims. Soon as you say something to me, man, listen, man, you got to stop getting high, man. You want some dumps? Come on, man. I'm doing, he doing him, man. Man, he, man, you can't, man, you can't just judge him like that, man. He doing him. No, you a junkie, nigga. You a fiend, nigga. You, you, you got dope in your body. You a fiend, nigga. That always been the story. Oh, no, she just doing her. She, no, she's a whore. No, no, don't call her that. You can't, she doing her. That, no, everybody got all these words to slide out of accountability. And they play victim. Why you got to talk to them like that? Why you got to, everybody, that's why our community fucked up now because can't nobody tell nobody the truth and hold nobody, accountability is dead. So as soon as you check them off, fucking tell them, damn, you a junkie, man. No, no, they ain't, no, he ain't no, but everybody want to mourn and cry when a motherfucker die. Motherfucker was a J. Well, would J, J's die. That's what happened. Motherfucker was a street nigga. Street niggas get killed. That's why you, you see the funeral, funeral you see Keisha and them, my baby ain't never hurt nobody. And your baby was a fucking mass murderer. You, you know he shot Poo Poo and them the other day, right? Fuck you mean, they came back and shot him. But you too busy not knowing what's going on because you keep running down to Miami because you got your body done. <laughs> and you worrying about yourself because now it's your turn. You, you, you figure like, no, he, he, he figured out. I gave him a laptop, I bought him some joints. That nigga figured out, you, you ain't know he got that gun too. You ain't never searched his room though. But you know how to get into a nigga phone, breaking nigga codes and all that shit, and find out he talking to Keisha, but you don't know how to search his own room? You don't know how to find a gun in there? So it'd be real live situations that we don't talk to, and anybody that step up in our coach and talk real shit, they don't like that shit. Yeah, well, they've been showing it to us for years. Niggas nigga need to watch Tales from the Hood. After you shot Crazy K, yeah. mm. some of his homies came back and shot you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me ask you this, Wallo. After being, you know, locked down for so long, when you got the news that you was going home, though, what, what was that feeling like? After some people, because some niggas were incarcerated, scared. No, the scariest day of prison is the day you got to get out of prison. For real? You know why? Because now, now you got to be that nigga that you never was in your life. Hmm. The nigga, that's the scariest thing because when you in the penitentiary, hey, yeah, you doing five years first year, you tell, yeah, mom, I'm chilling, man. I ain't, I ain't fucking with Boo Boo and Craig no more. You tell, you tell your baby mom, I'm telling you, baby, I just want my family back. It's me and you against the world. I'm done with them niggas, man. I'm done with everybody. I got my mind right. You learn about six, seven, maybe 20 or 13 big words. You know what I'm saying? You dropping them on the phone. You know how a nigga come on call from the penitentiary, they know some shit now. They trying to tell everybody, see, no, y'all doing that wrong, man. When I get out there, I'm telling you, man, we gonna do some things different. I got a plan. And then you got some goofy ass niggas that be waiting for them. Like, damn, what's nigga gonna come on with the plan? Nigga, what you doing in the streets? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like Jay-Z said in the song, niggas got them kind of streets from jail. You in the street, player, make your move, get your mail. Niggas can coast in the SL, but can't post bail. So it's like, you on the streets, you waiting for a nigga here, but that's niggas be waiting. So now when it's time to go out, niggas be like this. They be pushing niggas, niggas be like, hold up, don't push me. What the fuck you mean? Look. Time to go now, nigga. No, no, hold up, man. Put now, on your street clothes. Now it's like, <laughs> I gotta see if I'm really this nigga I told my grandma I am now. Right. Cause the nigga that you said that you is now, that you became, he never got challenged. He never, he never smelled temptation. Cause he in the joint. But now you come out, you might crack, motherfuckers crack. Because now you got to come out here and be a law-abiding citizen. You got to go get your identification. You got to walk around with identification now, buddy. You got to have your license. You got to have insurance. You got to make sure your baby's got insurance. 
You just was running around out here. Your whole life existed off a bank road that was in your pocket or under your mattress. That ain't how life worked now, baby. 401k. All the real shit. So now that's, that's hard. Responsibility is hard. Accountability is hard. So, you know, you know, when they told me I was coming, I was scared just like everybody else because you got to be somebody else that you never was. You don't know. Everything that you set up and they put you, prepare you to be, you don't know if you can maintain that person. Shit is scary. So, so, so give us, give us that day. You know what I'm saying? I ain't do number 31 days, nigga. That's a long time, man. That's a long time, but still, it taught me like, oh, shit. 31 days, nigga. That could be 10 years, 15 years. You want to do that shit for that long? I always tell people. When you get out that, that sign of freedom, because you've been so restricted for so long, when you be like, damn, can't nobody tell me to lay down and do that. I can eat what I want, touch what I want. I can go across the street. That sign of just being thankful and grateful for the little shit. It's that, and then it's the sad part that hit when you hit back to, to, to when you get back to the reality of your environment and your community, Boo Boo dead, Mike dead, you see a lot of shit is just different. It's like a movie. I don't know if you ever ever seen the education of Sonny Carson, right? Yeah, most definitely. Hell yeah. When Sonny come home, you remember when Sonny come home? How sad it was? Yeah. He walking down the street, see the girl, she fiend out. His man all fiend out. He come down, he like, you get on the joint like that. He got that walk. But everybody like, everything is dead, it's gloomy. Shit, he was beat down before he even got to the house. But let me give you the game, let me lay it on you. So when I get back, I'm in Philly. I ain't liking what I see. I had to wash my eyes. Mm. When I say wash my eyes, the poverty that took place, that was taking place in the ghetto when I got back, it was so draining that my homegirl my sister from another mother, Nadia, she was living down here in Atlanta. And uh, she had a motherfucking John. She had a uh, a store on Peter Street right next to Pee Wee Longway Studio, right? And she was like, yo, come down here, man. And my brother was living from another mother's site. He was living in Alpharetta, Georgia. So he said, I'm going to come get you. He came down. We drove down this motherfucker. I came down this bitch. Let me tell you something, man. You know, and I always said when I, I said this when I was in the joint, I said, I'm going down Atlanta, man. I got to go down there. Because all the TV shows, they always had that Georgia, everything was in, in Atlanta, everything. So you in the joint watching the TV shows, at the end you just see that joint come. I'm like, I'm going down Atlanta, man. Everything down Atlanta is popping down there. And they got all the chicks down there, man. <laughs> so I'm like, he bring me down this joint, man. I go on, I'm on Peter Street. At the time, I'm selling these T-shirts. There's always money in Different cities, got the different cities on there, all this dumb shit. But I'm making some, I'm right there. My man, this one I meet, my man Carbon15. Um, he knew my cousin, we connect. CTE. Yeah, that's my guy, man. Carbon, Absolutely. shout out to Carbon, man. I meet Carbon. Carbon uh, showing me around, showing me love. And I never forget, I stood outside of Lenny Small. I got me a cup of tea. I ain't really had no money. My bro, like, yo, man, we should. I said, no, just leave me here. And I sat in front of that motherfucker for like half a day. Just keep going, getting tea, going in the joint, taking the piss, and just walking around watching motherfuckers. But I, in front of the mall, I sat there, and I never seen black people living like that in my life. And I'm looking, I'm thinking, everybody, every time I see a motherfucker go to a car, Lamborghini, I'm like, oh, they, valet, they got a lot of different valets in here. I'm like, oh, shit, that's that, that's just, it motivated me in a way I never, it was just a motivation because i never seen black success, and i never seen black mannerism in the way i seen it in the South. How you doing? Them sneaks nice, brother. I'm, a, I'm like, damn, they talking to each other like that? It was something, it, and it changed my life. And I went back up top. When I, by the time I went back up top, it's like, it's all. I'm going to light this shit up, because I realized that it was a world that was bigger than the world that produced me. A lot of us don't understand it's neighborhoods outside of the neighborhood that we live in our whole life. But we don't, we don't see, and I think we lack exposure in the hood a lot of times, and we miss out on a lot of blessings. Yeah. Now, let me ask you this. For somebody who's from the South, I guess we get used to the hospitality and, and mm -hmm. things like that. But you say you saw niggas talking to each other for the first time and, and yeah. putting on, like, like on some it was on, shit. It was on some respect. It was, everything was respectable, man. You see what I'm saying? It was just every little thing. I'm like, it was detailed. Because I'm knowing for motherfuckers see you, man, know your whole life, man, won't say nothing to you. I know niggas I never spoke to in my life that they, they, they mad at me and I don't know why. And I, they never spoke to me and I never spoke to them. 
We lived on the same block. They don't fucking know. The, the, listen, the East Coast is the most critical place in America. From that Baltimore, D.C., all the way up to New York, Motherfucker be down ball and slim out. Man, Carlos Miller just here to let you know that we are expanding the merchandise department. Look at this. Check out these pastel colors that we got. You feel me? What's that? Light purple? What's that like? It's a boy blue. What's this right here? This like, oh, you think you cute? You just think you cute with this shit on, don't you? Look, that's right. That's 85 South. Make sure you go hit the website, 85apparelco.com. And I'm telling you, we taking over, bro. I think the ladies is going to really enjoy these right here. And I'm talking about for all the hustlers out there. That's if you're still living. Grab you something that say 85 South on it, bro. I'm talking about a t-shirt. I'm talking about a hat. I'm talking about some socks. I'm talking about a something. It ain't nothing to it. Hit the website. It's right here. You see where my fingers point? That's where the website go. Make sure you put the website right here. But look, go out there and support the 85 South Show. Yee! The niggas be, hey, Mr. Slim, I don't know you, man. Down DC. He know. Fuck you talking to me for, Slim. The nigga just be mad to be mad. Down here, <laughs> it's brotherhood and sisterhood on its highest form. And that's why, why you think it, y'all don't notice why the whole fucking Atlanta ain't Atlanta no more and everybody got the fuck from out the East Coast and ran down this bitch. Majority of the people down this joint from East Coast, New York, Philly, D.C., Cleveland, all that shit. Baltimore, they now they 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 didn't invade it because it was it was soft, it was loving down here, it was soothing down this motherfucker. That's why everybody left. But man, one of the things that I admire about you is the discipline that you have because you you got out of prison, but you on parole till what till what year? Two thousand and forty eight. God damn. October 29th, 2048. And the blessing about that is that next month I got a hearing to get off parole, October 8th. So you feel what I'm saying? Talk your shit. Good luck on that, bro. Talk your shit. Because I know you done been all the way through the justice system and all that. And I see you've been working with yeah. city council and state yeah, and all the officials. Key to the man. city. I got the key to the city. Just been doing oh, my thing. Oh, shit, nigga. I mean, yeah, yeah, got keys, uh, man. Well, speak on that, man, for like, I'm going from one side to the other. To... They gave me the, uh, they made me a, uh, they gave me an honorary sheriff badge so I could lock you niggas up. No, 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 that ain't what that mean, bro. Just, that's wow. what it means. Oh, you ain't. 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 It just feel good, you know, and you know, you don't know, just like people is really watching. You just doing it because you're doing it for me. You're looking out for the people, uh, trying to encourage youngins and uh, just loving you, loving where you come from. And, and I believe like with me, I come from every neighborhood, every every ghetto in America. It's just a different name. We all family. We got the same struggles. Right. And that's why I get the love that I get because I show people love. It's like, it's easy, but it's like... Uh, it's a blessing, man, to get recognized for doing right when you always got recognized for doing wrong. Well, can well, can I say that whatever happened or transpired in the past life, it's this life that we get to see the real you. You dig what I'm saying? That's why I say you are a product of rehabilitation because they swear that once we get in that system, we trapped, we stuck. We always going to be that same person. But this is, who, like you said, we never embrace our individualism. Never. And who you are is who you were before. It's just you had to own it. You feel what I'm saying? And we see it. We appreciate it. And we appreciate you giving off that energy because people who get incarcerated and come out, they at least got somebody that they can have a hero look up to and be like, look, yeah. I'm not a criminal. I may have done some stupid shit, but I'm like him. Yeah. And if he can do it, what you think? I can't do it. And you know, it's like, it's like I had to realize, and I, I always tell people, it's not about me, it's about the people that's coming after me because when you look at me, you say, damn, okay. Brother, come out of jail. I've been out of jail going on eight years. February be eight Talk years. your shit now. That's a long time. That's a long time. And it's like, I'm the cultural advisor of YouTube, bro. You know what I mean? Think about that. Mm -hmm. Cultural advisor of YouTube, which is owned by Google, 
and I created a program called YouTube Avenues where we went to about like 10 cities already, put like five, 600 people in a room. We bring different um, people from the music industry to talk on a panel with me. Mm -hmm. Outside of my team, Rachie, Mahalet, Rachie from the A, the queen of the A, Mahalet, um, uh, Adam, Brittany, uh, C Money, everybody that's on the team, these sisters and brothers that work on YouTube, they get there, they show you how to start your YouTube, how to scale on YouTube, how to monetize your YouTube. And it's just some shit that I came up with that I wanted to do when I got the position. And uh, we've been anywhere to Atlanta, D.C., Baltimore, Philly, Detroit, uh, Houston, uh, Miami, Oakland. And we really took to the community because that's something I wanted to do. But I just be trying to lead by example be to show it ain't about me. It's about imagine when you give people a real second chance. Mm -hmm. And you give them a shot that's coming from where I'm coming from. The possibility is endless. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and like I told him when I walked in here, uh, you know, my book came out last week. Talk September, to your top. September, September 10th, right? You know what I mean? It came, it came out September 10th. And this, you know, today, it became a New York Times bestseller. Hey! hey. Come so, on, man. Come on, man. That's what I'm talking about. Stop motherfucking playing, man. It's real, man. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. So, you know, Yes, sir. Big guy. Nah, Motherfucker, play it, bitch. It's, nigga. It's about, it's about just showing. Pop the bottles, ho. No, no, we don't need to do all, all that. Right. I care about that. It's a pop some water. So it's like, uh, it, it, it's just trying to show, not me. I just got to be an example of what could come if we give, uh, really give people a chance. And you actually, hold on, hold on. You actually have a second chance, right? People don't understand how the system works. You did a dub. You ain't. Technically, quite done. No. Nah. Because you still on, on parole. parole to 2048, which nah, means nah, nah. a small mistake. Yeah, they can remix me. They can, remix, they can remix me. So, how do you know I keep it? I'm free. I'm positive, but he still got the chain on me. You know what's crazy? That That's always on mind with me. Like, it's always like, it, it's always like, you know, you keep it in your mind. But, I still be just thankful to just physically be here. It's like, but you be like, ah, sometimes you sit back. I'm like, damn, I'm going to walk this. I got to walk this. But then you be like, something going to happen. Something good going to happen. Mm -hmm. you, you, you successful now. Like you one of the most successful media personalities, yeah. period. So you exposed to a lot of things that make, that is easy access. That's counterproductive to what it is that you know you got to do to stay out here. Yeah. How do you mentally keep yourself from doing the things that is available to you that'll, you know, that you know may take you back, but it's just, you know what I mean? Ain't you know what's crazy? Or... Parole and probation is like discipline. It's like, yeah, nah, yeah. I'm scared. No, it ain't really even that. I don't even fuck it. It ain't even about the parole and stuff. It's really about like, bro, I thought when I got money, I think, I think the idea that we have on, with money is, yeah, we want to get things, but we think life going to change and we think, all the traumas of our upbringing gonna disappear. And if you think this magical feeling gonna come, you be like, damn, I got the paper. And I was like, I was disappointed because I was like, what the fuck they was talking like some, like I was gonna get the Bruce Leroy glow. I thought I was gonna be like Bruce Leroy and shit. <laughs> like some glow was gonna happen. I was gonna be able to do all, kick people Who's across. The master? Yeah. yeah, all that shit. But nothing happened. You'd be like, all right, I get money. I buy some shit. I get a car. I drive it a couple times. I don't give a fuck about it no more. I do this. It's like, it just shit get boring quick because you have access. It's more fascinating when you can't do it. When you got access to shit, you be like, all right. And then you start respecting the regular things in life, like, you know, simply going in the crib, you know what I mean, watching some motherfucking movies, chilling, you know what I mean, doing some research, whatever. And I, I enjoy that more than anything, being in a hotel, just chilling. And I, was, I, was, I thought that I would be ever, but then I'm glad I never went to none of the parties that you you attended, y'all too. Ooh. Shit. Man, you got us fucked up. We don't go to no parties. <laughs> you had to go to the parties. You keep putting us we in We heard about the prison parties. Yeah, yeah, man. Oh, we shit. know you went to those. That you. He in there act yeah, like he, he mind his business. Yeah. Uh, you heard yeah, that? Yeah, uh -huh. nigga. Uh, we know. with a towel wrapped around his neck like a superhero. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> we finna fly tonight, baby. We finna fly tonight, baby. Finna crack the tuna fish cans open, baby. We finna fly tonight. Finna get fly tonight. Oh, you know what I mean? But I do want to ask you this. Million dollars worth of game, man. Like. You can tell from watching that you and Gil is partners. That's How did y'all keep that? Cuts. 
connection with you being away for a dub? Like, how did y'all come back straight into like y'all niggas have been functioning on in the free world? And not thinking that he owe you something. You know what it is? And I see that we ain't got that these days as long. If I love you, DC, I love you. You know how you got a cousin or a family member? You might don't talk to that nigga for six, seven months, whatever. But it ain't no, you want some bullshit. You ain't, he, it ain't no, he on some bullshit. I think our idea of bond, of a real true, you know, love for one another and real true connection is, I think it's, it got, it became diluted with social media that everything is about, damn, man. It's about right now in the social media world, where though. And then you got people that's so fucking clingy these days. They think they got to be everywhere with you. Hey, move. Damn, man, you ain't post me for my birthday. <laughs> Nigga, didn't I just call you and send you a cash app? What the fuck is you talking about? Man. Everything is so... Me and Cuz never had it. Cuz used to have the... He used to have... A motherfucker come to my cell in the penitentiary, right? <laughs> they be like, yo, man, I just was talking to my motherfucking cousin, man. He was with Gil. Gil said, what the fuck is Wallow at, man? That nigga ain't called me in two and a half years. I'm like, cuz, I'm doing my bit. He be like, what the fuck type bitch you doing, nigga? You don't even call niggas? I'm like, I don't need nothing. What the fuck I'm gonna call you for, nigga? You out there, I'll be there. Let me knock my time off. And when we came, came home, we was right back at it. Because what we got is different than anybody else in the family. It's just different. Our connection is different. And it was like, you can never owe me nothing for something that I decided to do. I gotta be responsible for that. And in our community, we never want to be sponsored. A nigga shoot somebody, then be mad at y'all three. Man, them niggas, man, they ain't send me no money. They ain't pay for my lawyer. Pay for your lawyer for what? Them niggas got kids and family. Why would they pay for your lawyer? You went out there and shot boo-boo because you was mad and he sucker punched you and you couldn't fight. I, and I think that's what it is. I've never been a dude to point fingers or worry about what somebody's supposed to do for me based off of the shit that I got myself in. I got to go do my time and figure it out. And that's why... When I came home, we was right back at it because it wasn't nothing. It ain't gonna never be nothing there. And man, for the on the mental health side, you know, after being locked up for that much time, it's like, I know, like you said, you get the money, you get the success, you get the girls, live beyond your wildest dreams. But upstairs, though, bro, how you keep your mind strong? You know, I talked to the therapist, man. I went. I, I remember this one, the first therapist I talked to. Right, she was so beautiful. I told her everything. Damn. <laughs> we must have sat there. We must have sat there for a day. I was in there. I went there early. I said, "Oh shit! What you want to know?" She's like, "This nigga crazy." <laughs> Were you against the idea of going to therapy at first? No, I'm not against anything that. Listen, if I listen, this how I am. I'm one of these people. If I respect you, and you tell me something that's going to be beneficial to me, I respect you enough to trust you enough to know that this is going to be beneficial to me, and you ain't going to do nothing to me. A t direct me in the wrong path because our relationship don't call for that. You know what I'm saying? So I was in there, man, and I was just talking and talking and talking, tell her anything. She asked me questions. What, what, what Robbie? The Robbie, I got away with you. I did that too. Yeah. You know, I was telling her all types of shit. I didn't know what the <laughs> fuck was going on. Yeah. I mean, you, you got a lot of uh, sponsorships. You just said something about YouTube, Colorado. <laughs> College, different colleges, you yeah. go speak at TED Talks, but your story is your story. So how do you disarm these people when they hear who's coming versus what they see when they get there? And how, you, and how do you not get emotional, to add on that? Because it's personal, and yeah. you're speaking from the heart for real. See, my area of concentration is I'm speaking about things that's going to benefit the team or the corporation or wherever I go at. Uh, you know what this alarm people, uh, when you have records or what you was named when you win? See, you lean with the win. Like, it ain't about no, they're not worrying about what you did. They worrying about what you doing. That's just like a motherfucker from back in the day. Yeah, man, I had the bins, man. Motherfuckers like, man, nobody want to hear that shit. What you doing now, my man? Fuck you talking about. And that's how it is when you're dealing with corporate America. How can you bring value to our value? See, if you don't bring value to value, devalue value. They not calling me if I ain't bringing value. Because one thing about this... It's always going to be somebody in this corporation. It's always going to be somebody in these colleges that's going to be looking for you if you got something going on or if you're moving and shaking. And these young kids, they want, they want me up in them colleges. You see what I'm saying? I'm, and I'm always there. I'm always there showing and proving. And I'm going to show up and I'm going to go up because I'm speaking from a different... Like I told you, you can't teach what you don't know. You can't leave when you don't go. I'm not no motherfucking baggy, 
baggy suit wearing motivational speaker talking some shit that's outdated. And I never won. They like, damn, I see you. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. So they not worrying about what happened. They worrying about what's going on now. And they worrying about how can we win together. And, you know what I mean? How can we collab and make and bring get especially corporate get visibility to their brand or whatever. You know that shit. This shit is all about traffic. That's all they care about. You thinking about writing some more book? You got your first one out the gate. New York what, Times what, what bestseller. Ma- and what made you write this one? Like, what made you like? You know what? I gotta write this shit down. Because I needed people to see the similarities in my journey and my struggles to that, and let them know that I'm human. Because they don't think people that that one is human. Right. They think it's always man. They, that's why I'm a, a lot of people don't bust a move and pull the triggers on their dream because they always make an excuse about why somebody else man. They they superheroes man. They that's why I can't. I, no, you can do the same. That motherfucker went through even more struggle than you ever went through. You know what I mean? So I just wanted to show the similarities in our struggles that we all human. We all fuck up. We all lose. But I just didn't give up. You want to talk to him about the penitentiary love stories you got coming? Which one? See, that's the, that's what I'm saying. Like you got to tell him about. <laughs> Like the the novel that you're writing about. Uh, oh, well, y'all don't need me for this segment. <laughs> no, I mean, no, I mean, Which the, one? The, the, the novel that you're writing about, you know, the, the experiences you had in watching, you know, your love experiences in prison. You told me about it at the airport. Oh, prison love story? Oh, well, you Why are you so intrigued? I mean, I just want him to tell the people. You know what I mean? It was intriguing to me when he nah, said it. No, man, I, I think you just... I don't think they need to know all that. That was about love. It didn't really matter. That was personal. <laughs> 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 no, but on some real shit, speaking of love, though, man, you you were in that box, man, and I know you saw a lot of dudes crash out when they got that bad news on the phone. Old girl sent that letter, she moved uh, on. I, was, I wanted to crash out when I found out Baby Leg had my chick. Man, Baby Leg had her, didn't he? I, yeah. She was going to Spelman, too, so I get on the phone, I'm like, that joint ring. Because when you step to the phone, you step to the phone with some Billy, Billy D. Williams shit. Man, damn, man, what's up, man? Let's I get with y'all later, man. I'm ready to go call my girl, man. Click. You have a collect call from a state correctional institution. The caller is Wallow. Then again, you accept, push it, accept. I'm like, what's up, baby? He's like, no, no, what's going on, man? No, she ain't here. I'm like, my heart was like, and I wanted to scream because I'm like, I'm, I just wanted to scream because it was like, it was like a movie, like. So a probation officer, nigga? <laughs> <laughs> He like, you is doing the interview. <laughs> I wouldn't scream because I'm like, you know how motherfuckers like Bigfoot? I wouldn't scream, Baby Lay! No. Baby Lay got my chick now. That motherfucker answered the phone so cool and smooth, and he had an accent, so I knew that nigga was from Bankhead some fucking way. Why you got to put it on the west side? Because you know why? Probably I, would, though. He, he sound like one of the rap niggas, Dungeon Family or something. So I'm like, I'm like, yo, uh, I don't want to say her name because I think she married right now. She, she a lawyer, up, uh, motherfucking doctor, lawyer, up, fucking uh, boss now. But I'm like, is what's the name in? I said, this the right number? Yeah, this the right number, man. She cheesy yeah, watching cause it. Because he hear me with the, yeah, this the right number, man. He threw that man. I said, that nigga from down there. He from down there. So he I'm from like, Memphis. I'm like, so now I don't know what to say. You, you, he like, you, you want to leave? He like, you want to leave a message, bro? God damn, that nigga Nice help. nigga. This is a nice nigga, <laughs> bro. <laughs> Hey, you spank? You want something on your book? Because yeah, he knows. I'm, I'm going to put the whammy down. I'm going to make sure she puts something on your book. He know he lost the good one. He be like, hey, man, whatever you need for letting her get you over here. You want the honey buns with the icing on it? I appreciate so, so, you for being so, so a fuck I, up. I'm man. like, no, I'm cool. So when I hang up and go back to the cell, See, you gotta hey, you gotta you gotta make sure your walk is right, cause a nigga know when you got knocked for your phone <laughs> oh, in the phone room, and they gonna get you. Oh yeah, you got nigga got your bitch. <clears throat> you done, nigga? Yeah. <laughs> go ahead and cry. You done? I make sure I'm like. I, I walk out the door like, damn, man. I, I walk out the door, I forgot what I said, but I said it because, you know, other dudes be waiting in line. I'm like, damn, man, I'm going to call, damn, I got to call him right back. Like, because I ain't let him know what was going on. So I slid to the cell, threw this towel up, man. I screamed, man. <laughs> <laughs> so what? So what? Throw that filter on the bars. That shit is. So what? Ah! <laughs> but, but what is it? I was like this. Why, my baby? <laughs> She's a good girl. Put that wind on that. Like that. <laughs> she don't deserve this. But why? What? Why is it like that's the energy? Like I was just telling somebody the other day. I was like, bro, when you get locked up, bro. All you need is a woman to show you a little sign that she like you. You gonna fall in love? What? Off top? That's I'm talking about. You. That's my bitch. <laughs> I'm 
don't you give a right to a letter? <laughs> that's my bitch. Yeah, you go crazy. That's me. <laughs> that's baby. That's wifey. You want to join? You want to join? You call? Listen, listen. You been talking to her because listen, you got the pen pal game. So you might meet a chick. You talking to her? Listen, I didn't see you talking to her for a week and a half. You call? This is after anything cool, baby? You, you do the kids' homework? Like you, you don't even know the kid. You run in the house for the joint. Right. Man, you just put up in childhood <laughs> trauma. My mama was fucking with a nigga in jail, yeah, That's man. fucked up. I Mike. God, man. It's hey, what? the call. What's up, little man? How y'all living? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is this, man? <laughs> nigga don't even know hey, you. Mama's still at work, man. I'm like, man. I swear to God, man. No. Man, man, a nigga was sending letters, man. I'd take the letters and hide them and shit. Letters, <laughs> letters this thick. <laughs> the letters was yeah, this thick. Yellow 15 paper. pages. As long, yellow paper. The long joint. The yellow paper letters, man. The long hair. But why niggas? But why niggas mom, don't keep man. that same like love intentions when they get out? Cause cause you come outside, man. You see all his ass out here, man. Especially right now. See, oh, it's over though. Chicks don't do bitch no more. That shit over with. Right. You go to jail, man. You get a joint. You lucky to the motherfucker. You get a chick that's man. You lucky. I tell all the young bloods, listen, man. Don't go to jail. That little tender you got, baby, lady, gonna put the penetrate. He gonna be, he gonna beat it to the mattress. Man. Beat it to the mattress. Don't go to jail, Neff. Man, that's that the comedic aspect of what you, what you do and just how cool you are and that not taking yourself so serious to be able to add that as an element into what you and Gil do. Like, both of y'all niggas is fucking crazy. Yeah. Like, why? What makes you, y'all, both of y'all okay? Both of y'all the real guys from the streets. Mm -hmm. Both of y'all really got them stories. But what makes y'all okay, especially with the way y'all clown each other, mm -hmm. all that shit, that's a big element of what makes people gravitate to y'all. What made y'all recognize the importance of that? Because... We realize, just like y'all probably realize, that all the shit that we take serious coming from the ghetto, it's, it's just funny. All this tough shit, all this cool shit, that shit goofy to me. I be like, <laughs> so I just laugh at it and I make jokes of it, even if we making jokes to each other. And one thing about our, our community, black folks, I grew up listening to Richard Pryor. I listen, I still be listening to Richard just for no reason. I listen to Richard, uh, Paul Moody, Red Fox, my uncle had all the albums. One thing about our community, if you can make them laugh, you can make them listen. Mm -hmm. And we got to do that. We all get, we always got to give them candy covered medicine. That's the only way you going to take. That's the only way we're going to teach our people. They got to. They can't just be no. You can't be serious on a motherfucker all day. So that's important with us. But it's also important to joke at all the shit that people take so serious. They be like, it ain't, okay. it ain't that deep. Right. Like y'all goofies, and we gonna joke at it. We gonna joke off each other doing it. But it's still like making a joke of the whole idea of all this serious, this real shit, and all this goofy shit, that's, it just don't make no sense. Well, now that you've been out eight years, you done accomplished more than niggas who have been out they their like entire it. life. <laughs> what? Fucking lazy fuckers. <laughs> What's in it for Wallow? Because now you, like you said, it's no limit. Like, what do you see? What do you want to do? What What's do you next? see? Uh, I was, I think, you know, back in the day, I used to uh, be an exotic dancer. I'm ready man, to go on with this bullshit, bullshit, man. All right, y'all don't need me. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Get the book, man. Bitch, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I'm just saying. I'm ready to start, doing, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready start doing parties again. Like, you know, they be getting... What, what you the heard what the fuck going on? He gonna start doing parties again. Why you looking at me like I know? <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, it's they, I'm just, you know... See, that nigga institutionalized. That's the institutional No, no, I'm talking I was stripping on the streets. I Me and Gil, Gil was... That's how you got locked up. Gil was stripping first. He said, cuz, we can make some fast money. So he said, you got to come up with a name. So I came up with a name. I go out there. He going to cut you out for this. Yeah, I mean, they called them baby shrimp. They called me TTD. Uh, so um, I go out there. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Get out of here, man. <laughs> it was like, you know what I mean? I'm just saying, like, it was wild, man. I was <laughs> dancing. It was, But I think about that sometimes. Like, damn, I might go back, get a residency in Vegas and just start stripping. He's still on parole, man. Don't do that. No, I can do that. That's, you know what I mean? That's indecent exposure. I can flash heat as long as it ain't real heat, so it's cool. Oh, man, man your man wild yeah. as shit, it's man. It's hey, man, so you talking about getting back in the strip, and we got to put some clothes on you, man. Oh, we, we got you some cool 85 right now. South shit. You know what's crazy? In my the meantime. My motherfucking cousin stole my whole bag out of my car, man. Word. He go to watch to clean the car for me. He stole a whole bag. Y'all like, whole shit. Y'all gave me at the, at, the, at the joint in Philly. Man, we'll make sure you I'll got all that. See, you got to leave that alone. Tell them where they can go get the book, man. You get the book anywhere books are sold. It's on the bestseller list. So if you want Amazon, it's going to be on the bestseller list. If you Thanks. want Barnes & Noble bestseller list, where Apple, you. best, everywhere, you know what I mean? It's a bestseller. But, uh, you know, I appreciate y'all for having me. I appreciate Thanks. everything y'all do for the culture. Oh, no, we're all up, no. We ain't doing that. Man, no, you one of the most motivational real. niggas no. that we I know, bro. You got to you gotta bless the audience with some kind of... You got to leave them with at least $150 worth of game. I know I mean, you might not give them the whole million, but... <laughs> Hold up, first of all, <laughs> you ain't going to say shit. 
something earlier. Okay. Man, but, hey, That's gone, Cam. Look like he is sweating. Oh, man. He's like a French pencil bully, man. He's shaking wheel on the playground. <laughs> this nigga, Don't let him get you, why? Yo, that nigga he, he, he been hot all night. Yeah. <laughs> that's what that nigga do, That nigga man. vicious. He's <laughs> he a roasted motherfucker. Oh, you know, I always believe that a lot of people don't materialize their dream because they biggest hater is them. Mm. The biggest haters you ever gonna you ever gonna run up to in your life is you because some of y'all out here, y'all thought of the idea of whatever you want to do, a dream, a business idea, whatever. Y'all think of that idea, then y'all think of five ideas not to move out on that idea that you can really do. Talk. It don't got nothing to do with nobody else. You know how motherfuckers like, oh, they hating on me? Nah, nah, get the fuck out of here. You hating on yourself because every time you look in the mirror, you're not comfortable with yourself. You don't believe in yourself. You don't have confidence in yourself. And a lot of people always say, you got to be a kind man. I always say, you got to be a kind man. The word kind man comes from confidence man. A confidence man is somebody that's going to come to you, and even if they're running the con on you, they're going to make you believe that they're doing something right, even when they're doing something wrong. So you got to become a kind man of your life, of your dreams, of everything you want to do for yourself. Um, it, and, it's, and it can be the simplest things of, I want to go here, I want to move here. You got to be willing to take the leap of faith because, like, I look at it like this. I'm 45. There's a great chance that probably 40% of my life is gone. 50% of my life is gone. 90% of my life, but I'm going to show you something very important. So every day I want y'all to check this out. I get up, and this is why I go so fucking hard because I, I operate like I don't know when I'm going to get up out of here. So I look at world meters every day. I get up, thank God, yo, my man. Yeah, you hook me up again. I ain't gonna hold you up because you gotta take care of the, the babies, the elderly, the mentally ill. So I'm gonna I'm keep it moving. I ain't gonna get you. I ain't gonna beat you in your head. I look at World Meters out of that. All right, World Meters is a website where it show real time, real live population. How many people on the planet? You see this number? Oh, let me show you. Turn it this way so I can blow it up. So right here, as you can see, there's a number. You see that number running? That's how many people is in the world. 8.1 billion, right? It's running in real time. This is how many people was born this year. Births, 94 million. This is how many births today. This is how many people died this year. 44 million. This is how many people died today. Look, and it's dying in real time. Look at the numbers. So when you look at this, I look at that and I say, oh, made it again. I'm going to go out here and I'm going to live this shit out to the max because I don't know when I'm going to be another number. I don't know when I'm going to be one of them numbers. And the only number that I could be is that number and the first number. The number is the population, but I'm going to drop off of that number to be a part of this number, and it's over. Lights out. There's nothing you can do there. Stop waiting to die to live your dreams. What the fuck? You, you going to do it when you did? Like, everybody is afraid. Every, and then stop using social media as a measuring stick of what you're doing and what you're not doing because, as you know, we know, 90% of these motherfuckers is capping. They manufacture this life that they want you to live. This, they, they want you to believe that they live in it so perfect. And, then they, and you will have a real life. And you will take your real life and put it up against this manufactured relationship, this manufactured success. This shit be like a, a production company. They have it like, you're looking at their relationship. Oh, they so, I don't, oh, a couple goals, couple goals. They hate each other. Hmm. He be beating her ass in real life. She really a drunk. She's a prostitute too on the side. They don't like each other. But you looking like, oh my God, relationship goes. I want that. <laughs> it's fucked up. Nah. So I, I, my main thing is go out there and live, stop hating on yourself, and we only gonna do the game of life one time. Well, folks, there you have it. Yes, I think we just hit you with $85 million worth of Come game. Come on, man. 85 yep. South Show, Wallow 267, Craig Fax. We out of here, baby. Oh, you Craig, Craig. Craig. Go get oh, that yeah. book. Go, go get, get that book. Hey, what's up, it's your man Carlos Miller? Look, you know the 85 South Show is back on tour with the Big Business Tour. This year we're hitting the road and we're bringing comedy, culture, and chaos to cities all across the country. And we want you to be a part of it. We're looking for partners in every city, whether you're a local business or a national brand, this is your chance to get in on the action. Don't miss the opportunity to sponsor a show and connect with our incredible audience. If you're interested, just hit the email on the screen and let's make big business happen together. The 85 South Show Big Business Tour is coming to a city near you. It's your man Carlos Miller, and I'm over here at the 85 South 
Studios, 85 Ways. And look, if you would like to be featured on the black market, all you have to do is go to the website, go to black market, click submit, and submit. If you want to be featured on here, you can come kick it and be my guest, and we'll talk about your business and how we can scale up and what's going good and let the people know exactly what you got going on. Hit the website, register, submit, and come kick it with me on the black market. You know what that means. It's money on the floor.